or without. For me, uh, being at the Alaska ICHRS a few years ago, 2011, I saw the slide by Gary Hitzig that showed one side with PRP, one side without, and I said, wow. I did, it was like a crystallizing moment in my head that I said, I'm going to give this a shot. So I started with uh, this Autologel product, and I can tell you it's as, it's as good as my system I use now, because in a way, I've tried every before recipient sites, after recipient sites, this product, that product, and I can tell you the product, this works, re PRP works really, really well with, um, with surgery. Uh, I'm going to talk about my, how I do and everything. The, uh, do you need other products like ACEL, things like that? I, I'm going to discuss a little bit of that, but I will say that my opinion, yes, and it's an, I don't have a definitive prospective, randomized, double-blinded, controlled study, but I, I believe it works. Uh, I currently use the ANGEL system. I have no financial affiliation with any company that I speak of, and the reason I, I like this system is that it allows me to titrate the PRP. It gives me both quantity and quality. What that means is that I can titrate to a, a 1.8 to 2.5x physiologic platelet range, and why do you want to do that? Theoretically, it's the most active range of where platelets are. How do you do that? With this system, you memorize this chart. Now, actually, what you do is this chart tells you where you want to be about 2x. So this chart, when you pull out your very rich platelet, you, you dilute it down with the platelet pore plasma until you get a 2x. For me, I draw 120 cc's of blood, and I mix it down um, until I get about 35 cc's of usable product. And I'll, I'll explain that right now, which is my mix. So for surgery, um, drawing 120 cc's of blood, I pull out 35 cc's at a 7% hematocrit. You say, why do you do that? Ha haven't you heard, Doc, that 7% I mean, hematocrit is not good because there's impurities and things like that? Uh, supposedly, this draws the most active part of platelets, the platelets out, and when you compare it to um, when you compare it to orthopedic work where you don't want any blood in the joint, I think this is different. There's blood everywhere when you're working on a hair transplant. I don't think if you're adding a little bit of blood into the mix, you're going to degrade the integrity of it. I think uh, listening to the, I talked to the lead scientific investigator for this company, and he's what he suggested, so that's what I do. Do I get better results than 7%? I don't know. But he says it's great, therefore I do it. Done. I don't, I don't put the A-cell into the donor area anymore because sometimes, it, you know, if you put it into the, in, between the wound edges, sometimes it can actually widen the wound theoretically. Um, I may have seen a little of that, I don't know. Again, there's a little bit of voodoo to what I'm going to tell you about. I just, I, I'm going to tell you that it, it definitely helps the surgery. I cannot tell you that this formula is perfect, and I probably will tell you that in three months if I lecture on this, it will be slightly different. So it, I'm constantly jiggering with my ingredients. And I use 10 cc's of the PRP. I use 100 milligrams of fine A-cell, uh, fine powder A-cell. And I, basically what I do is I pour out all my uh, platelet-rich plasma into a little ramekin. I take out five cc's, put it on the side. I take my 100 milligrams, take a little serial, uh, uh, tongue depressor, mix it up, drop the rest, uh, and se segregate it. Then I have this huge 30 cc platelet pore plasma I sit on the side. So I have all that sitting out there. And again, I'm videotaping this for YouTube, so you can just rewatch the video on my channel. It's youtube.com slash samlammd. Um, and then through recipient sites, I now do it after I make the recipient site. So I to mess, I do all my recipient sites, inject it afterwards, and I wear some goggles because with little holes you can spray a little bit. Is that better than before? No, I say both have worked well. Um, and I just, where, what plane do I inject it? Subcutaneous. The one word of caution is when, if you put the A-cell and you mix it about an hour ago, shake it up before you inject so that it's in an equal suspension. Um, and I just place it equally across the recipient, the recipient bed. And I start using platelet pore plasma now in the donor area. I use it in fringes. And I'll show you a slide in a moment why I started doing this. I only started about a month and a half ago. So if you say, or a month ago, or maybe even less. I don't know, I'm bad with timing. And why do I do that? I'll, I'll show you why. And I, I don't have long-term examples to tell you it works. Without surgery, I'm not 100% convinced it's amazing. I mean, I, I've seen some great results. I've seen some okay results. I'm changing my protocol now where I'm trying to do it every three months uh, over and to see if that's going to help more. So I basically take 60 cc of blood. With the ANGEL system, you can't do this without, with less than 40 cc's of blood. So in a way, it's great. In a way, it's bad because if you're just pulling... You know, if you want four cc's, you really got to draw a lot of blood to get it, or the, the system won't spin. 
And so I'm, I'm getting 18 cc's of that. And I take the whole thing, mix it with 100 milligrams, fine. Acel, remember Acel, if you don't know, comes in both sheets as well as different types of powders. I use 100 milligrams fine powder. And then I activate it, and that's important you understand that, which is that uh, PRP should be activated, whether it's mechanically with recipient sites or chemically um, or me me mechanically with a derma roller or something. So if I'm not doing recipient sites, I have to activate it somehow. So I double activate it a lot of times. And I basically take uh, five cc syringes, I draw up four cc's of the PRP and A-cell mix, and I put in another cc of calcium gluconate, shake it up, and then inject it in the recipient bed subcutaneously. And if they don't have a lot of miniaturization that I'm worried about, I mean, tons of miniaturization, female, where I'm worried about traumatizing it, um, I will derma roll it. Um, uh, how do I... Uh, how do I uh, anesthetize? I do a ring block, okay? Just a standard ring block of lidocaine around the head. Um, actually, this is great. I learned this uh, from Cole, um, and actually what he does is he takes, he measures two centimeters out, dots all around the head. He puts in um, a 30, he puts 2% plain lidocaine with a 30 gauge needle and a vibration device, and he just puts the little aliquots immediately subcutaneous at each of these points. Then he bridges between those with 1% lidocaine using a 27 half, uh, one and a half inch needle and, and with a vibration, and there's like very little pain and when the patient's completely awake. So I like doing it with that method. And I do this about every three months. The, remember, activation, activation, activation is important. This is a good example of a good result. I can show you examples where they're they look the same. I can just copy and paste my before and after because I don't always believe that as a standalone procedure it's as reliable as with surgery. With surgery I'm really convinced and the reason is as I started to do this I had an example of this guy with poor results, uh, poor growth. Um, he, this was at the time of October 2011 when I started and I came back and did a second case with him. Of course I didn't modify the technique slightly but I basically added PRP and A-cell. He's had three procedures and every time has been going great. The one time he did without it, it just didn't grow that well. Another example, I know you can't see it too well in this photograph, but I can tell you with this African American, it was a massive difference in see-through when I added the PRP and A-cell. So the people have served as their own controls at the juncture when I was moving into this field. So that's why I'm so convinced of this. Um, and there's another gentleman that just at that time, October 2011, I was, he, he decided not to do it because I wasn't convinced it worked. And then I came back to the second session when I added it and I was like, oh my God, okay. I've had maybe four of these cases that were poor growth right at the time there. And I believe that uh, there's a colleague of mine out of Brazil that uh, talks about something called a personal growth index or PGI because he does long hair transplants and he watches patients and he can actually measurably, quantifiably measure uh, their growth rate saying that if, if you grow 90%, you're always going to grow 90% with all factors controlled, same surgeon, same surgical team. But I believe this, this really blows out the PGI. I think if you have a naturally poor growth rate, you can potentially have a very good growth rate with regenerative medicine. Um, I use hypothermosol for, uh, for my uh, FUE cases. I haven't figured out how to use 100 cc's and get it across a whole strip yet. Um, but maybe I, but I basically use PRP, A-cell, and I started using ATP about a year ago. And I've been seeing with ATP a faster healing phase, but even faster growth. So on average, when I was doing this, these procedures naked, I like to say, without anything, at six months, I was seeing, on average, good growth. When I added PRP and A-cell, my average time to growth was starting at about four months. Uh, now that I've added ATP, I'm not always seeing it, but again, I've, I've done ATP now almost exactly one year. I've seen it even earlier at, um, at two to three months growth, which is it's even more accelerated. And, um, you know, how do I mix it? Basically, I, 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 I put about, now I put, I, I'm, re -re I'm rereading the form, so I am actually may lower my ATP count in the, in, the, in the mix, but I'm using currently like 10 cc's and 100 cc's of, of, uh, of my graft solution, okay, so that the graft source solution, and then I take 20 cc's and I mix it into a couple hundred cc's of saline and I, they spray themselves for the first couple days. It's, it's, the theory is that it's bridging them toward a growth phase. Um, I, I was always questioning, is it worth the extra expense? And I talked to a colleague of mine in Brazil when I was lecturing there in May, and he said, oh, Sam, you gotta continue doing it because what he noticed is he never did PRP and so he still hasn't. But he, had, he said, just like me, where I noticed that massive juncture at October 2011 before and after regenerative medicine with PRP and A-cell, he says there was this big swing when he just started adding ATP, it was mind blowing. So I said, you know, this is worth it. Anything I, you know, I can do to add better results, I'm going to do it, you know. 
especially with more fragile graphs like FUE, but I, I do it across the board. I've been happy with it, so I'm continuing for the time being. Maybe you ask me next year, it may not be, but right now I'm happy with it. Um, and then platelet-poor plasma, this is something I just added, and I just asked my colleague, uh, Tony Scalfani out of New York, to, to send me this slide, because I was in Orlando, and I saw this slide, and I got, oh my God, it's like this light bulb, boom. So I added this, and what this slide says is that activated PPP is almost as good as activated PRP. So now, you know, I'm looking at if they've got miniaturization elsewhere in areas that I'm not transplanting, I'll, I'll focus my PRP in the prime zones, and then I'll go back and layer the PPP in zones that maybe I need a little bit more in the donor site. Maybe I'll need a little bit uh, in the lateral hump where I, you know, maybe I needed some more PRP, but I ran out. So I'm using PPP. So that's, that's what, where I, I stand with that as I'm starting to incorporate it. Do I have any results to show for it? No, but I think this is maybe something interesting and I always, if people are using it and getting results, great. Um, stem cells, you know, in terms of uh, AD, ADSCs, adipocyte-derived stem cells, uh, I, I don't have any standpoint on this. I just update you at least from, I, didn't, I missed KL, so if there's any new things that came out with this meeting, I would be happy to hear from any of my colleagues. But last year, there was a pilot study that showed uh, adipocyte-derived stem cells injected in the scalp showed no improvement in, in hair growth, but that's a limited study. I just, uh, but I don't, I don't use stem cells in the classic sense, although whatever stem cells are within the PRP, clearly there's probably benefit, but I'm talking about ADSCs. Finally, again, I have no financial affiliation with this company, but I was in Orlando, and I think you get as much from vendors as you get from uh, just education and learning uh, from peers and colleagues and lecturers, and I, that's why I brought them here, because I'm very passionate about this company. It's a public company. I don't own stock, um, but I, I, it, what's cool about this, this is it's basically saline. It's a... Uh, it's, it's a electro, electrolyzed water that is sodium hypochlorite, so safe, and it kills 99.999% of bacteria, viruses, and fungus on contact. So I, and it's not ototoxic, oculotoxic, anything. Um, I even sell it in my office. Um, I, go, I go to the gym and spray everything down because my, my staff had an open wound that didn't heal with megadose antibiotics in four days has killed it. So, and they have graph studies, not with hair, but with uh, other, other, other um, graph, like dermal graphs, and they've shown that this actually helps improve graph viability. So now, you know, you get this little cyst and things like that, you wonder, is there an infection? So I'm starting now to, uh, I haven't really created a, a very standardized pro protocol yet, but I'm using it perioperatively for everyone in replacement of Hibiclin, so they do a full body wash down. If they are like an ER doc or someone with a decent exposure to the MRSA risk, uh, and it kills MRSA, kills VREF, it kills Klebsiella, Serratia, um, E. coli, resistant E. coli, uh, Pseudomonas, uh, it kills regular staph, it kills uh, HIV, H1, N1, Ebola, uh, Aspergillus, Canada, everything very quickly. And I had lunch with the CEO, he says it's actually within five second kill rate. So, and this is just a chart to show you that. I mean, and again, I have no financial affiliation with any of this, this company. I just want to bring technology and I would love to hear your feedback if you guys start using it, it whether it helps or not. Um, I use it for my, all my fillers. I use it uh, everything but basically Botox uh, I do it for. So the end with this is I really believe that regenerative medicine has played a major role in my, in my practice in a very favorable way. Um, and uh, if you guys use it, I'm always interested in hearing your protocols. And hopefully that was helpful for you on a practical level. 